it's so cold in this room. It's cold outside. It's just cold. Hey everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my December haul. So we are here to talk about the books that I have acquired in the month of December. I was looking at my list and I think like three of these are from a book subscription box in a sense and then the rest are gifts in some way. So this is a haul of Christmas is basically what this is. But that's really about it. So let's just dive in to the books because I don't have a lot of books but I do have a good number to show you. Some of these you will have already seen because I've read them. Surprise! So the first two are books that I got from my book of the month for December. The first one you will have already seen because I talked about it in my December wrap up, which is The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johansson. Uh, this is a dark historical fantasy reimagining of The Nutcracker. Um, it's the first thing I've read by this author. I do have the trilogy, the uh, Queen of the Tearling trilogy by this author, which I still really want to get to. And now that I've read this one, I'm very much interested in that series. Uh, but this one, like I said, is a dark retelling. So you've got these two twins. You've got Clara and Natasha. And at the very beginning of this book, I mean, this book follows a very long period of time from when they were like newborns up until they're like in their 50s, I want to say. And we follow, it's all in Natasha's point of view, but at the beginning of the book, when they are like days old or less at that point, um, Drosselmeyer, the character Drosselmeyer shows up, who is someone that no one really wants to mess with. He is kind of scary. And he tells, basically says, I'm going to be their godfather and bestows a prophecy of sorts on them where Clara is going to be kind of like the happy, light, go lucky, positive things are going to happen to her twin. And Natasha is the dark twin where things are not going to be as happy for her. And so we follow them as they grow up. And um, as the events of the Nutcracker, like the play and the stories, take place on that fateful Christmas Eve, and you see Clara and Natasha go to the kingdom of the sweets and Natasha ends up making a deal with the sugar plum fairy um, who is a very dark creature so it takes some turns let me tell you but it is very dark twisted kind of honestly it feels perfect for like the Halloween time period just because of how dark the fantastical elements are but it does take place around Christmas I loved it, but I picked that one up. The other book I got from Book of the Month is A Winter in New York by Josie Silver. This is a rom-com. I don't know if it's primarily a Christmas rom-com or if I could read it in like the winter because as you can see it's very cold. Um, but it says a young chef stumbles upon a secret family recipe that might lead her to the love and life she's been looking for. Uh, so we follow our main character Iris who moves to New York City to start her life and she realizes the Big Apple is not quite as picturesque as she thought it was going to be. I don't know a whole lot. Uh, she has a best friend named Bobby who kind of like helps her along the way. She's a baker or a chef and so there's definitely some baking and stuff but I don't really know a whole lot about this. It just seemed kind of cute and fun and I just didn't get to it. So maybe we'll see if it's specifically a winter romance or a Christmas romance but I picked that one up as well. And then I have a special edition that I ordered from Fairyloop to come in, and that is Foul Heart Huntsman by Chloe Gong, which is the second in this duology, which is, I think, called Foul Lady Fortune. I have the first one as well in this beautiful Fairyloop edition, but I've been holding off on it so that I could have the second one, which is here. Uh, absolutely beautiful, has these amazing sprayed edges. Uh, in true fairy loot fashion, we've got beautiful end pages. The book itself is stunning, which matches the, um, sorry, I said end pages hardcover, which matches the end pages. So, um, my edition came through. Why do you think it's signed to? Yes, it is. So, this is a separate duology, but it does take place in the same world as the, um, 
Our Violent Delights, Our Violent Ends, that duology, um, which is a reimagining of Romeo and Juliet in the 20s Shanghai. This one takes place 10 years later, it takes place in the 30s, um, still in Shanghai. And it says winter is drawing thick in 1932 Shanghai as the threat of the of a Japanese rebellion. We follow our main character, Rosalind, who is one of the main-ish side characters uh, in the other duology. Um, and it's she is a spy, and it's kind of like a dual spy situation here. But this is the second book, like I said, in this duology. So I've been holding off on reading these just because I wanted the second one before I started the first one. I just have this feeling that if it's like my experience when I was reading the other one, I'm just going to really enjoy it. I also have the novella that takes place kind of between these two stories as well that I like to read. But my special fairy loot edition came in the mail. The next one is a gift actually from me to my husband for Christmas, which is Symphony of Secrets by Brendan, Sh oh no, Slocum, I believe. He wrote The Violin Conspiracy, which is a book that Chris just loved. And this one is another one, I'm assuming. Um, it's about the jazz age. It follows an ambitious young professor, um, a jazz age woman obsessed with music, a world famous composer, and a shocking secret that will echo across the generations. So he writes kind of mysteries. I wouldn't say, th I wouldn't go as far as thrillers, but mystery-esque thrillers that have to do with music in some way. So this was his newest one. Chris loved the other one, picked this up for him because he said, yes, please, I like this author. And I said, sure thing. This cover makes me question things. Like it's just a very bizarre cover, but that one is for him. All right, the next few are from Chris to me. The, the next one is a graphic novel. Um, and that is The Complete Mouse, which is by um, Arts Spelgum? Spelgman, I think is how you, I'm real bad at this. Um, but it's one of the books that got banned recently. And so when things get banned, we go, hmm, I would like that, please. So <laughs> Chris picked this one up. It's about mice, but it also has to do obviously with Nazis in Germany and things like that. I don't actually know the story. The art style is a little cramped I'd say. I feel like it's going to be a lot more words than I'm used to when it comes to a graphic novel. Um, but he picked it up because he knows I love me some graphic novels. And so this is just the complete works of that. That's why we have it. There you go. Another one that Chris bought me for Christmas is one that I honestly don't know a whole lot about because there's not a whole lot on the book, but it's Out of Darkness, and this is by Ashley Hope Perez. This is, as you can see, won some awards. Um, it's a YA book. It's definitely got some some quick chapters there, but it says here, this is East Texas, and there's lines. Lines you cross, lines you don't. That clear. That's all we got. Um, I feel like I did look into this and it takes place obviously in Texas, but it follows an actual historical event. But this is one of the ones that he picked up for me. And I am very interested to see what this is about because I honestly, oh, it says literally right here, the explosion. So something's about to happen. Oh dear. I don't know. I'm just very interested to see what that's about. We then have another book that I've already talked about because I read it in December, which is the fifth volume of Heartstoppers by Alice Oseman. I love this series. This is just the next installment in it. There's going to be six total, so there's one more. I don't know if we're going to get that anytime, if, if anytime soon, probably not. Um, but the author was, at first, this was going to be the last volume, and then she basically said, like, I need a little bit more space to finalize the story between Nick and Charlie, so you're going to get one more. Uh, but this one was great. It is a series. I'm sure many of you know what this is about, but we follow Nick and Charlie. And this is set in the UK and they are in school and it follows them as they become more than friends. And then it follows their relationship as they progress through school, through hardships, through military illnesses. And in this one, we talk a lot about um, your first time and also with Nick being a year older than Charlie, he is going off to the next step, which is college or university. I'm not sure which how, what it's called in the UK, but the next step where he will no longer be in the same school as Charlie. And so university, look at that, it says on the back. So um, 
they they uh it's it's that kind of conversation but i love them this was a much lighter copy or a much lighter story than the past i think couple have been a little bit darker so this one was fun to get into the next few came from my mother-in-law for christmas the next one being a mina lena copy of the second harry potter i think these are beautiful it's like i said mina lena who does all of the artwork that you see in the harry potter movies and they have been coming out with these really beautiful additions. She gave me the first one a few years ago. And so this was just the next one. They have like, not only are they like the most beautifully illustrated books, but you also have like things that pop out of the books as well. Um, so I'm trying to find one that's gonna, gonna show you. Here we go. So for example, like in this one, you've got the Whomping Willow and the, the car. I'm not doing a very good job of showing you, but um, beautiful, beautiful book, but it's just another edition of the Harry Potter book that is beautiful. The next one she got me is one that she really, really enjoyed. And honestly, it sounds good. I feel like I remember her talking about it. And that is Remarkably Bright Creatures. And this is by Shelby Van Pelt. I believe it follows our main character. Um, here we go. A charming, witty, and compulsory readable exploration of friendship, reckoning, and hope that traces a widow's unlikely connection with a giant Pacific octopus, which sounds super bizarre, but I'm sure it's going to be like hard hitting and there's going to be, or it's going to hit you in the feels, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But she loved it and had some friends who she has recommended this to and also loved it. So I always love a good book recommendation from her and... That one honestly has just a really cool, fun cover and sounds good. I'm very interested to see what this is like. It also looks like it's told semi in like journal entries because you've got the like date and time as well. So I don't really know what the point of this story is, but I think it's about a woman exploring her life a little bit. So interested to see what that's about. And then the next one is one that she just kind of like read and said, here you would enjoy it. So I rom-com of sorts which is one night on the island by josie silver which i believe is the same author who has the winter in new york book that i bought earlier this month but this one basically is one cottage two strangers and the start of a great love story so you've got these two strangers who end up accidentally renting the same cabin and then having to stay there but it takes place in ireland which is really cool um our main two characters are cleo wilder who is a um columnist dating columnist and she's spending her 30th birthday alone just in this cabin hoping to get away and then you've got mac who was doing some soul searching himself so he goes to this cabin to explore his irish roots but unfortunately a mix-up in the booking means they both have reserved the same cabin for the same dates and they've kind of got to figure it out so um i'm excited to see what that one's about i love a good story set around Ireland, Scotland, you guys know how I feel about all that. And then the next one is another one for Chris, and that is a graphic novel of Watership Down by Richard Adams. And this one is adapted and illustrated by James Stern and Joe Sutphin. This one is Chris's favorite book, I think, of all time, honestly. Um, to the point that we are, he's been trying to get me to read this for God knows how long. I started it for school. Um, when I was in college, it was a book for one of my classes. I started it, couldn't get all the way through it. So I ended up spark noting the very, very end of it so that I could get through that class. Um, because we read like a new book every week in that class. Like it was maybe not every week, but like by the end of that class, we had like five or six different novels that we had read over the course of the semester. And this is a thick boy. So I didn't give it as much time and he has always wanted me to read it. His brother also really enjoys it. So their mom gave both of them a copy of this beautiful kind of illustrated graphic novel. Um, so I'm sure he he's gonna love this. Um, we looked at some of the illustrations already and they're just absolutely beautiful. But yeah, this is a story about rabbits who leave their warren to find a new warren and the adventures along the way. But this is quite a chunky, I mean, it's not chunky, but it's really heavy. <laughs> so he got that one. Okay, and the very last ones here um are ones that my parents <laughs> bought chris because we found a used bookstore that had all of them and they are 13 monk books 
<laughs> this is quite the stack. So I'm not going to hold, obviously, all of them up, but we've got, um, they're, I think, books 2 through 12. I'm not sure they're in order, but um, they are hard copies of the Monk books. This is one of Chris's favorite shows. He loves Monk and he really enjoys the novelized adaptions of them. I don't know if any of these actually were episodes. I feel like maybe a couple of them were based off of episodes, but I'm not entirely sure that they were all episodes, but um, they're just books, adaptions of the characters from Monk solving mysteries. So we do have the very first one in a paperback, so I'm sure we will replace that at some point, but we went to a used bookstore up near them and we just saw all of them and he was like, these are so cool. And so my parents got them for him for Christmas. So there are 13 books. I will not read off all of them. Just assume that we have two through 13 if you are very curious, but yes, they're mysteries, cozy little mysteries about Monk who is a um, man who used to work for the police department but has really severe OCD, anxiety, everything, germaphobe, all of it. Um, and so he ends up being a consultant on some of these cases and so it's him and his little like quirkiness um, helping solve mysteries. So we have 13 Monk books to add to our collection. I have no idea what we're going to do with them but um, yeah that's 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 it. But that's the end of this haul. Like I said, not a whole lot, a lot of Christmas gifts this month. So of course we are obviously very, very grateful to our families for the amount of books that we have received. And like I said, um, not a whole lot of things that were actually bought this month, which is good. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned. I would love to know all of your thoughts or if there is something that you picked up recently or a gift that you got for Christmas that's a book that you would like to share down below. I would love to know that as well. But if you like this video and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you're part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So we'll check all that out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!